God bless you and welcome back to the channel Kingdom Crown Ministries and I am Prophet Kenneth Emanuel Thornton and I pray that this message has found you in health, wealth, and wisdom. Today God is going to have us to take a look at resurrection of the dead. The resurrection of the dead. And a lot of people in today's time um, do not believe in the resurrection. And I'm talking uh, religious institutions and people as well. So we're going to take a deep dive into the resurrection of the dead and we're going to see why it was so important for God to have us to understand and have us to uh, have a sign through Christ Jesus to be resurrected from the dead so that believers may believe and so that God's perfect will could be and will be um, brought forth in these last days. So turn with me, if you will, in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. And the 12th verse. And it reads. But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead. How can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead. Then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised. Our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God, for we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead, but he did not raise him if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You who are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all men. And that verse is telling you right there that God used Christ's resurrection from the dead as a prophetic sign to the masses that not only is God real, but that he is a God that can raise up dead things. He's a God that can raise up a dead life. He's a God that can raise up a dead situation. He's a God that can turn a drug dealer into a preacher. I'm a witness. He's a God that can turn a drug addict into a preacher. He's a God that can take a life that was lifeless. And breathe the breath of life back into it. Without any type of corruptible elements that are left in that life from the death. Only God can do these things. And that is why it's so important for us to understand the resurrection of the dead. Because we all know that once you're gone, you're gone. As far as the natural is concerned. As far as the natural mind and the natural order of things that we know about humans and, and life. Once you, once you die, <coughs> excuse me, you are gone. And that is true. But when the natural is confronted by the supernatural. 
That's a whole nother thing. And God uses that to change and, and get people to understand that, yeah, as far as uh, the natural sciences are, are concerned, once your heart stops beating and your brain activity stops, you are, you are considered dead. And there is no coming back from that. But the supernatural says, not so. Not so. I can look at my life and I can, I can see clearly where I was dead. I was, I'm, I'm one of those people that um, you can say cheated death more than more than I should have. I shouldn't be here here talking to you right now. OK, I can think of seven or eight times easy in my 50 years, maybe more where I should have been gone, knew I was gone. OK, knew I was gone. And yet God stepped in and resurrected my life to live and preach his gospel for him. So there is resurrection of the dead, but the, the resurrection of the dead with Christ was a precursor to show us that not only can God physically resurrect the dead, Someone that is already dead, physiologically. But he can also resurrect the dead life that you have on today. The dead situation that you may be in on today. These are things that God has embedded in the resurrection of Jesus Christ to give us the faith to believe, to give us the faith that we need to believe that God can resurrect the dead. Look at verse 20, verse uh, chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20 reads, but if Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep or who have died. This was the first fruits. Christ was the first fruits. He is that first example that God is using for us to understand the resurrection. Because the resurrection is very important and we're going to look a little deeper into that. Verse 21. For since death came through a man, Adam. The resurrection of the dead comes also through a man, Christ, or the second Adam. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive, if you believe. But each in his own turn. Christ the firstfruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him. Then the end will come when he hands over the kingdom of God to the father after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power of Satan and the world. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. So as we see there, death is an enemy. Because when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, when Eve ate of the fruit and disobeyed God, mankind fell, Satan, all the authority that God had given to Adam and Eve was transferred over to Satan Death and sin came into the world at that moment. Death became an enemy of mankind and an enemy of God. But God had already made provisions in the third chapter of Genesis to bring Christ right after the fall. 
And that's why the scripture says, as in Adam, all men die. So in Christ, all men shall be made alive. Christ was that answer to death. And that is why the resurrection is so important because the resurrection is a um, active, an active opponent of death. Death is the sign that Satan loves to see because it reminds him that he struck a great blow against God and mankind when he got Eve and Adam to sin against God and obey him and death came into the world. That's why he loves to kill, steal and destroy. Because he feels as if death is um, his thumbing his nose at God. And God brought resurrection of life. Resurrection of the dead. As a sign to Satan. That what you did in the garden wasn't enough. Because I brought my son to die, yes, but to be raised again, to be raised again. And that is why hate, uh, Satan hates the resurrection so much. And uh, quite frankly, a lot of people don't teach and preach on the resurrection. They'll do it on Easter Sunday or the resurrection Sunday, they'll do it. He'll touch on it a little bit. But this is a serious issue that God wants us to highlight and wants us to truly understand because it is oh so important in these last and evil days to understand that the resurrection is what's real. See, we here at, here at Kingdom Crown Music Ministries, we don't focus on the death of Christ. We don't focus on the thorns. We focus on the crown. We focus on the golden crown filled with jewels. That's why it's a part of our logo. And that's why we don't use the, the, the crown of thorns because that represents the death of Christ. That is giving Satan glory. We represent the crown of Christ. Kingdom crown music. Ministries. We represent the resurrection of Christ. My God. The resurrection. Because the death is just one part. The resurrection. That's everything. The resurrection is everything. The resurrection is what brought me out. The resurrection is what brought you out. The resurrection is what will bring you out. And old Satan, he wants you, he wants us to focus on the death. He wants us to focus on them thorns, them crown full of thorns and how Christ was humiliated and how, how Christ uh, had to suffer and how how he had to uh, be beaten and and uh, ridiculed and and spit upon and and kicked and and drug and 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 all of that. He wants you to focus on that. He don't want you to focus on what happened on the, after that third day when that stone was rolled away. But that's what we're here to focus on today. Glory be to God. Glory be to the most high God. Look at me, turn with me, if you will, to Genesis 22. And five. 
Genesis 22, verse 5. Let's see what God would have us to learn through that scripture. Genesis chapter 22, verse 5. And it reads, He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, father. Yes, my son, Abraham replied, the fire and wood are here. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. And this is speaking about Abraham and Isaac. When God had him uh, to sacrifice Isaac as the burnt offering. But it's also a precursor to Christ's resurrection. Because Abraham answered Isaac when he asked about the burnt offering. He didn't know he was going to be the burnt offering. God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And uh, we all know God did provide the lamb. And that lamb was Christ the king. Verse 12, he says, do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. The angel called to Abraham. Do not lay a hand on the boy. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. We see the precursor here. And this is in the book of Genesis. We see the precursor of how God provided his only son. And Abraham had such great faith that he was getting ready to do the exact same thing. He was willing to do the exact same thing. But see, God will put you to the test. God has to put us to the test. What are you willing to give up for the promise? What are you willing to give up for the blessing? Everybody wants to be blessed. But not everybody is willing to give up their only son. Not everybody's willing to give. A lot of people ain't willing to give up nothing to be blessed by God. I've had to give up a lot in order to be before you preaching this gospel that I'm preaching today. And some days I look at myself in the mirror and I can't believe who I have become in Christ. I cannot believe it. And maybe one day I'll share my full testimony. Uh, uh, excuse me, but I'm in the works of doing some things to do that. Um, but it's unbelievable. It really is. But what are you willing to give up on today? What are you willing to sacrifice on today? That's what God is, is looking for some people that are willing to sacrifice. And look at what God did for Abraham after he saw that, that what God was going to do in giving up his son, he already knew he was sending Christ to die and to be rose again for our sins. But he, lo he, he looked for someone with the same character as him. 
He looked for someone with the same character that's willing to do and, and go through the same things that he's willing to go through. In verse 15, verse uh, chapter Genesis 22, verse 15 tells us how he blessed Abraham because of this. Check it out. And it reads, the angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of cities of their enemies through your offspring. All nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. All nations are blessed. Because of Abraham's obedience. I am his offspring. You are his offspring if you are a child of the most high God. And God is showing us in this. That indeed obedience is better than sacrifice. Because he was willing to give up his only son. In faith. Not to be blessed. He didn't do it for the blessing. He did it because he loved God. He did it because he loved God. And when you love someone, you'll listen to them. When you love someone, you'll obey them. When you love someone, you will sacrifice for them. God is looking for your obedience on today. He is looking for your sacrifice on today. So that not only may you be blessed, but your offspring will be blessed as well. The resurrection is real. The resurrection is real. Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 11, 19. Hebrews eleven nineteen. Hebrews 11, 17 through 19. And it reads, By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had received the promises about was about to sacrifice his one and only son. Even though God had said to him, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Abraham, Abraham reasoned that God could raise the dead. And figurative, figuratively speaking, he did receive Isaac back from death. See, Abraham already had the faith that God can raise the dead. Now, you got to be understanding that this is before Jesus even came on the scene. This is before Christ was even resurrected. So it wasn't like he had any type of um, reference to give him confidence that God could raise the dead. But Abraham spent time with God. Abraham knew God. And he knew if God is telling him to 
sacrifice his only, his one and only son, Isaac, that God is probably going to raise him from the dead. And even though the angel of the Lord stopped Isaac just short of sacrificing, excuse me, stopped Abraham just short of sacrificing Isaac, he knew that Isaac had been brought back from death because Abraham had every intention to sacrifice the boy before the Lord. And it was also God showing us that we don't have to use our son or daughter or or loved one as the sacrifice. God just wanted to see if he was willing, willing to. God said that I will provide the sacrifice for you, Abraham. And he provided the ram in the bush. That was the precursor to Christ coming. That was the foreshadowing of Christ coming. No, Abraham, you don't have to, you don't have to sacrifice and kill your, your son. I'm going to sacrifice and allow mine to be killed. But more importantly, I am going to raise him up again on the third day. I'm going to raise him up again and allow everyone to see him. I'm not going to allow everyone to be able to benefit and partake from his resurrection in eternal life. I'm going to allow everyone to be uh, uh, citizens of the kingdom of heaven because of the resurrection. Not because of the death. Christ's death didn't do one thing. For me or you. So we don't focus on Christ on the cross. We focus on the resurrection. That crown of glory. And that is the one of the reasons why God gave me the name Kingdom Crown Music Ministries. A lot of people focus on the death. A lot of people, kingdom music, kingdom this, kingdom that. And I ain't, I'm not fronting on anybody. You can be kingdom whatever you want to be. But we don't focus on the death. We focus on the resurrection. We don't focus on the burial. We focus on the rolled away tomb. The resurrection is oh so important. The resurrection is everything. Because it is through the resurrection that your life and my life and the lives of many, many millions of others are able to walk through those pearly gates of heaven and be partakers in the kingdom of heaven not only in heaven, but on earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. I pray that this message has found you in health, wealth, and wisdom. Once again, my name is Prophet Kenneth Emanuel Thornton with Kingdom Crown Music Ministries. May God continue to bless you and keep you. Keep the resurrection first in your life because the resurrection is what God used to save you and me and mankind. God bless you, God keep you. May heaven continue to smile upon you until next time. Peace. Take care.